Well, welcome everybody to the Ishtar Channel podcast. My name is Joanna Rushton and I'm here with Inasa Mabu Ishtar. We're coming to together today to have a chat with you about the topic of experiences and how we often step outside of ourselves for those experiences. We often look elsewhere. And so we're going to have a little chat today about what is, number one, wh why do we seek these experiences? What are we looking to achieve through them? And then we're going to have a, a chat about what we, re in order for those experiences to really ground us more deeply in our spiritual growth and opening our connection to our spirit, how we can really support ourselves if we are going to go for some deeper experiences through whether that might be plant medicine, whether that might be some deep retreat experiences that takes you on, you know, uh, a deeper journey into you. So where should we start with this, Ishtar? I know well, we, we've both got conversation experiences. Yeah. We're, we're both, we've both had experiences of plant yeah. medicine. So, yeah. You know, but maybe let's, then. let's let's start with the with the path itself you know because if you're gonna if you're looking for experiences or you're having experiences it's because you're a seeker on the path so you you really tapped into that and you're seeking a connection to something to god to source to your higher consciousness to your spirit to your soul um you're seeking that connection you might be seeking connection to others through that as well but, but there are, I've always told, you know, the, the Tantra, Tantra is the path to spirit. And I've always been told that there are four paths to Tantra, four paths you can walk. One is, of course, the path of the chemical path through drugs, whether they're natural or not, they're still chemical. So that's a, something that you, you intake and it has an effect on you, heightens some awareness within you. So there's that one. Then there's the, the, sexual path of a heightened um, erotica uh, which actually affects the kundalini so that's another one and that's an experience again and then of course there's the other one which is movement and sound so you might get that through sound um, through movement that sort of thing and the last one which is though well, is always said to be the most sustainable but the that takes the longest perhaps but and also more discipline is of course the the path of meditation, the meditative path. So they're the four paths that we can walk and we often tread each of them to have these experiences to seek what we're looking for. And even on the meditative path, there's experiences because, you know, you, you get taken on a journey or you do a visualisation, which can have a huge impact on you. As both Joe and I both know, we've had those experiences on journeys and visualisations where you've had the most extraordinary experiences, you know, um, and um, where I, I've had several in my life where I would tell you that I've had a visualisation where I went and met God, you know, so, and it had this profound effect on me, profound effect. So, um, yes, they're all experiences in some way and we're all seeking those sort of experiences. Mm. You know, the very first time I was open to um, an experience through the chemical form um, was with another one of my teachers um, that I was invited to have this experience. And I was, you know, very naive at the time, didn't, you know, know much about um, the psychedelic path of opening, you know, our consciousness through that medium and it was one of the most beautiful um openings that i've ever experienced and if it wasn't for i mean i i remember uh afterwards my meditations as a result of that initial journey my meditations afterwards went so much deeper and mm. I was able to draw so much deeper as as a result and I really one of the things that 
I think is is so important and and I know what we want to share today because really supporting people that are seeking and really helping them understand what is it that they're seeking and that deeper connection to their own soul, the deeper connection to their own spirit. And without having that, first of all, as a clear intention and an understanding, I feel it's really important for that person um, even in my initial journey, I was asked to set an intention. I was asked to draw a mandala. I was asked to go into prayer um, yes. and, mm -hmm. you know, all of these steps prior to even taking the psychedelic. And, and I just feel looking at today, it's become so popular um various you know whether it's um ayahuasca or dmt um or you know liquid acid um they they're they're pathways and it's the chemical pathway that's become so very popular as ha as also um breath work you know <laughs> and going for that um somatic release breath work again for another experience but my question is how consciously are we entering entering into these experiences so that they become long lasting yeah and sustainable and and to be honest you know no chemical experience is going to be long lasting or sustainable in in terms of your spiritual evolution, it's going to kickstart you perhaps. It's going to give you an experience, a memory of something, touching something that you can't touch um, every day in your own life because you don't have the tools to do that. Um, it, it's, it's going to, you know, you can have that experience and that memory and you might talk about it for years to come. But does it actually sustain you on your path? you know, every day does that experience, you know, take you to live your life in a conscious way? Most probably not. Um, I'm not going to uh, refute anyone who might say it does, but but seriously, it's, it's always known the chemical path is the quick fix path, and it's often called that, you know, let's go for this quick fix, let's get the goal, let's kick that goal, let's reach this place that we want to reach. And, and it's always been that seeking, you know, um, and, and people have chased that. I know, you know, in my youth, LSD was the big thing and mushrooms, you know, we'd go and we'd have lots of psychedelic and, you know, journeys on things like that, So which would awaken our consciousness. It also, for some people, was very destructive as well. And I know it can be destructive for others because, what happens in a lot of those experiences is can also bring up your shadows. And if you're not prepared for that and your shadows come up and you have no one guiding you, that can be a devastating experience, um, mm. which will certainly remain with you for a long time unless um, you have some help with that. So there's, there's pros and cons for it. I'm not saying don't do it. I'm just saying be aware of what it can and what it can't bring you. But as we're talking about sustainability, if you really wish to sustain your path, you need a path that's going to bring you tools that you can use every day, you know, and I'm not sure I'd advise ayahuasca every day or, or walking around in your life, you know, full of acid. I don't think that's probably the outcome anyone would seek. Um, but, you know, to really have those tools that you practice every day, and which actually makes your path sustainable, your path to spirit, so that you become conscious and you can walk that path consciously each day instead of just having, you know, the, the experience maybe once a month, once a year, whatever, and that becomes your, oh, I've met my spirit today, but for the rest of the year I'm completely unconscious. Mm. Mm. You know, so, um, and I won't deny that, for many people that that chemical interaction can certainly um, enhance things, you know, and um, with the right teacher, with the right tools, you can then um, go deeper in another, you know, take the next 
tantric path, perhaps, whether it be um, the erotic one, whether it be the Kundalini, whether it be, you know, go and have the experience of sound and dance, which can be ecstatic. Many people have that ecstatic experience with sound and dance, which is beautiful, and raise their vibration through that because it's moving the body, moving the cells. It's all energetic. And then, of course, the meditative one, which is probably the one that a lot of people struggle with because it does ask for discipline and it does ask you to continue in a sustainable way on a regular basis to have a commitment to your path. And it's probably the most serious way of making that journey, but not always the most desired. So what I'm really hearing here, and I think it's really important for our listeners to understand that, you know, we're certainly not saying no, we, you know, to, to going and having these experiences, we've both done so. And our experiences have absolutely served us in at different times on different levels. And I think that what we're really looking to convey here to listeners that are seeking um, an experience that is to help them understand who and what they are, help them to have that deeper connection to their spirit, is to first of all have a clear intention and understanding of um, what, what they're choosing and why they're going in to that particular choice. And then an understanding that doing it under the guidance of somebody who is seasoned in their own development of consciousness. Very important. So, so important. And this is, I think, something that I really, you know, want to stress to anybody who's curious and, you know, perhaps been sitting on the fence for a while and, and you know, had friends that have, had experiences and they're thinking to themselves, oh, you know, I think I'd love to to go and and, and do a journey. Um, really have the discernment for who you seek as a guide for that experience and make sure that they are grounded um, and ground in their in their own consciousness and really look at look at their life. I think yes. that that's a really important thing to do as well is is look at your teacher's life and look at how they live their life, what reality have they created for themselves? Um, Because ultimately we're looking for a way shower to show us a path that we're wanting to uh, find within ourselves. And Mm -hmm. a way shower is going to emunate and mirror that ultimately the reality that we're looking to find within ourselves. So, I feel that taking the time to seek a a teacher that's going to support you and a guide that's going to support you. I think also, can we speak a little bit to as well? And this isn't, you know, to create fear in people. This is really about education and really about helping people um, be equipped with the understanding so that they can perhaps come away from this podcast and and have clarity for themselves of, you know what, I am ready for that. Or yes. perhaps I'm not. Based on, you know, the different sides of what we're sharing here. So, you know, I've seen a lot of clients and students over the years. Um, and I've seen a lot of them have amazing experience and it propelled them on their spiritual path. And they come back to a spiritual practice on a regular basis that then, as I said with me, has has deepened as a result of those experiences. But I've also seen on the other side as well, I've seen people who have gone, uh, students that have just gone for the experience. Um, It's been a great experience, but as you say, it becomes a one-off and then the seeking continues rather than the embracing of the experience to take them deeper. I've also seen some pretty horrific black holes that people Mm. have found themselves in. Um, I'd love you to speak a little bit to the understanding of how through these experiences, no matter which path we're we're talking of here, we're opening to different portals of consciousness within ourselves. 
and having some discernment for our own readiness to do that is going to make a huge difference to our experience of that portal being opened and whether it's divine timing for that portal to be opened for us, whether or not we are our consciousness and awareness of oneself has developed enough to manage the consciousness and the energy that we're going to open to through those various paths. So could you speak a little bit to what is actually occurring for us at a conscious level of opening through our multidimensional nature in these different experiences? I think that's a great point you've raised, Joe, because, you know, we're, we're quite complex beings on an energetic level. We're quite complex in a physical level, but we're also quite complex on an energetic level and we have many layers and many levels to our being. And so, you know, depending on what you're choosing to do, lots of doorways can open. And we've seen this before where somebody's suddenly had this huge Kundalini rising that they were not prepared for and then suddenly they've got all they're hearing voices or you know they these doorways have opened that they can't shut down and so you know without creating fear um i feel that you know if there's some imbalance within you if you haven't faced some of your shadows and you allow yourself to have that sort of quick fix awakening um where that's just you know come up you know, you can open doorways that you won't be able to close and you won't know what to do with them. And and, and that can be very difficult, as you have you said. And the thing is, so I think you need to have a really good understanding of yourself in a way, not looking for your spiritual path to be a goal-setting path. You know, we get so caught up in, well, I have to reach this state. I have to be this place. I have to be this enlightened goddess or god, I have to be this uh, visionary, I have to be this way shower. And, and there's a lot of that going on in our consciousness at the moment, stirred, of course, by our social media where we become extremely competitive on our spiritual path. And so sometimes we're really pushing ourselves, we're competitive with ourselves on our spiritual path and we're competitive with each other on our spiritual path. And so, you know, therefore we're pushing ourselves to dive into something that sometimes we're not ready for. Now, I, I know myself that when I have channeled um, high-frequency activations for students, the masters often will tell me, well, you, this can't be given to the public because they're just not quite ready for this yet. You know, um, this can't be given to this level of student because... It's actually going to blow their circuits. It's actually going to affect all their filaments and they're going to open up too quickly, you know. And and so I think, you know, while you might be sitting there saying, oh, good, I want to open up quickly, um, please be careful what you wish for because sometimes you're not ready to open up to that. And if you have a lot of traumatised consciousness within you, you have an inner child that's, that's really damaged, um, doing some of these experiences, you need to be very careful of that because it can open doorways that you don't want to open. At this point, you want to go slowly, you know, don't push. So, um, and, you know, you don't know what your past life recall is. You're not sure of what that might be, what you, what sort of can of worms you are opening up um, by going, just by being curious. You know, it's all very well to be curious, but just be more conscious that you're working with energy and you're working with consciousness. And it's so important that you become aware of that. And mm -hmm. as you said earlier, become really aware of who you're working with, who your guides are, who your way showers are. Have a look and see what their journey's been. Have they just been doing this for five minutes? Did they go and do a workshop somewhere online and now they're taking this? Is that what's going on here? Because therefore they're not going to be a good guide for you because they haven't got the experience. You want a guide that's got the experience that, that can show you the way that's been doing this work for quite some time and has the experience behind them, whether it's on a, whether you're taking the chemical route at this point, whether you're doing yoga and or sound and dance, you know, um, you want someone who really knows what they're doing with that, whether you're doing the Kundalini 
awakening through erotica, through the tantric uh, work, whether you're doing it um, through the meditative techniques, you know. I mean, in my early days, I sat with people doing visualizations that were certainly not in alignment with higher consciousness. But in those days, I had no idea. I thought it was all so wonderful because I was dabbling in all of this. And yet I do know that it could cause damage. You know, I saw this. It caused damage to certain people in the group because the person was not being responsible. So I feel that sometimes because we're talking about spirituality or new age or what people call woo-woo stuff, nobody takes it seriously. Mm. But seriously, it needs to be taken seriously because you're working with a very complex energetic system which can be damaged, which can bring up a lot of stuff that you may not want to look at right now because you're not quite ready. Maybe you need some foundational work, um, which can, yeah, can enlighten you and, and bring you to another place. But are you ready to walk that path yet? Ask yourself. So experiences are great, but they're not going to sustain you on your path. You know, what's going to sustain you on your path is commitment, uh, really practical tools you can use regularly every day, and a bit of discipline, which, of course, is not something that everyone wants to hear when they want to go and do some amazing journey somewhere. So it's, it's not sexy. It doesn't sound very exciting. It hasn't got all of that, that attachment to it. Because the ego, it's that egoic sort of consciousness that is seeking that adventure and seeing the spiritual path as an adventure, which it is. But just, mm. as I said, be careful what you're looking for here. Yeah. Mm. Very good advice. Because I know that, you know, when we are seeking uh, through... Well, especially in the younger generation, you know, I see it with my, you know, with my stepsons, um, you know, the late teens and 20s and accessibility to mushrooms and acid tabs and things like that is, you know, so in common yeah. place these days. Um, and what, you know, what does concern me, obviously, I've been a stepmom for a number of years now, and what does concern me is uh, when their intention is is the seeking of the um, the imagery, you know, go being able to go on a journey and have that imagery, yeah. have that you know fractal colors and the sacred geometry and um, and it's it's a beautiful experience, but again, if we're not understanding energy and consciousness then you really haven't come out of that experience with any more than looking down a kaleidoscope that's right and it's Which, and it's in a, and it's still no matter how natural it may seem it's still a chemical it's a, it's, mm. it's a chemical shift in your in your consciousness in your mind that's creating it and yet, you know, I mean, I, I, I'll i be honest, I did lots of acid trips when I was young, you know, but um, but I realise now with all the work that I've done with the masters and the journeys that I've done with them and with with groups and students that, that I didn't need to take a chemical to have that experience. Mm. I had no need of a chemical for that. I can do that any day without a chemical. And in... Mm. Truth, when I'm doing that, I'm actually doing it through my spirit. I'm not doing it through a chemical that's affecting my brain. They're two totally different experiences. And when you're having an experience, um, a, a true energetic experience, not one that's being created by a chemical, then so much begins to shift in your cells which is called alchemical transitional transformation because it's, it's it's alchemical it's shifting in your spiritual and your physical dna and it's sustainable because it's actually making a shift it's not something that's been created in your mind through a chemical and the next day it's gone except mm. it's a memory mm. 
it's actually created change. It's making um, shifts and change, transformation within you on a very deep level, on an energetic level that no chemical is going to do. So, so. that, so what you're speaking to there is when we really work into the blueprints of our energy bodies. That's right. When yeah blueprints of our energy bodies start to be affected by the consciousness that we're opening to through you know meditation or again you know whichever path that is but we're starting to actually work with the energetic blueprints of each of our 12 energy bodies mm. and the exactly. consciousness held within mm. them exactly yeah so, you know i um and i also i think it's also really important though to you know, to be balanced with what we are sharing, as we're saying, you know, I, I've had some incredibly deep, profound experiences that have really, um, I'm going to say, accelerated my, my spiritual path. But be, the acceleration has been for one key reason, and that is because I've come out of that experience with really sitting with two things. Number one, what what did I learn from, from that experience? What consciousness yeah. did I open to within myself? What was it that I was learning about mm. myself? And how can I bring those lessons or lesson into my life, into my daily life? So that was a very that was a very key intention for me when I have ever done any journey. It's been very much about I'm I'm opening my consciousness to learn and understand what it is I'm needing to about myself at this time to support myself to move forward. That's always my intention. And then I'm always shown something and I'm always given a deeper understanding of something that I then come back in practice in my life. And the key, the second key is the integration, the integration of the energy that we've just <laughs> pushed a door wide open and consciousness has flooded in light has flooded in and there needs to be an integration of that light and that consciousness and and that is the second most important key uh for anybody who does feel you know guided through whatever path is that they have an integration um tool or practice and this is where um, everything that Ishtar has shared about really a little bit of discipline, a little bit of understanding of what it is that you are working with your energy. I remember in one of the slides of uh, our PowerPoint in Path of the One Heart, mm. you have at the end of you have at the end of one of the slides saying, um, "Energy is serious stuff." <laughs> working yes. working with energy is serious stuff yeah and it it comes to what you were saying before often we you know think it's all a bit of fun uh and we forget really we're working with the ground substance of that which we are and if we if if anyone listening really understands what i've just said then you'll have a, a, a reverence for any paths that you choose. Um, and that integration is, I, I feel, one of the most important, important things for any experience that we have, that we have seeked as a as a way of accelerating the, the spiritual, uh, the spiritual path. Do you have for anybody um, who is thinking or who has, you know, um, had some experiences lately? Do you have any recommendation of a spiritual discipline or ritual or tool that they can start using uh, to help them integrate? Well, you know what I'm going to say is meditation because, because it's the path I found to be the most sustainable path and it's where you begin through the regular practice of meditation you begin to meet more of yourself. So you begin to help integrate whatever you've experienced and it comes up for you. And I, I think that's one of the reasons sometimes people avoid it. But I think the other thing is to remember what we, we do these experiences, no matter what they are, 
And look at how you're entering it into you. Are you entering into it just for a bit of fun? Are you entering it into because you want to be enlightened in the moment? You know, are you entering it into you because you've got peer pressure? Um, everyone else is doing it, so I better do it. Uh, so I've got something to talk about. You know, look at your reasons for doing it in the first place. Um, and they don't have to be serious. No, not at all. But And I'm not saying don't have experiences. Certainly go for it on everyone, the tantric path, the chemical path, the, the sound and yoga path, the movement path is a beautiful path. All of these paths are wonderful. Um, yeah, have them. I'm not certainly not saying not to experience it. But I think the most important thing is what Joe brought up earlier was make sure your guide, whoever is taking you on these journeys, whoever is teaching you this work, is someone who demonstrates very clearly that they know what they're doing and they have had a lot of practice at it and they're not just learnt it on a five-minute, you know, online webinar or something and now they're sharing it again with you uh, because you won't get the support you need. So you need to make sure your guide can give you that support if you need it. But you, we do need it. We need it ongoing to give us the tools and the, how to integrate it because no matter what experience you're going to have, a good way shower will give you tools to keep, continue to work with what you've experience what you've learned what you've met within yourself in that moment um mm -hmm. and so you really want someone who's going to offer that to you and ongoing not just in that moment it's um you know it's there so you have someone who's responsible and someone who can support you is so important mm -hmm. and they will you know so um and they will guide you depending on what path you're working with and I think that's that's really important. But we were talking about this earlier and reminding ourselves that often these experiences are like being on the diving board. You're jumping up and down on the diving board and you're diving in. Sometimes the water is shallow, sometimes the water is deep, but you're having an experience that's going to take you into the water. But as Joe said earlier, we were having a talk about this, uh, if you can't swim, if you don't know how to swim, you're going to drown in the water. So <laughs> you really need to know that you have some tools to learn, you know, to swim while you're in the water, at least to learn to float uh, once you've dived, you know, so that's so important for you. So don't be in a rush. That's the first thing. Have an open heart and make sure your guide knows what they're doing. I think that's really important. And the other thing is to remember having an experience is not walking the spiritual path. Having an experience is having an experience. It's great. But it isn't actually seriously walking the spiritual path. Gives you a great memory, helps you move forward sometimes, but walking the spiritual path is putting one foot after the other and actually walking the path and practising. I hope you have, uh, those listening, I hope you've taken something from this chat that we've had and that uh, you've taken some guidance from it and be safe whatever you choose yep and uh have a clear intention a clear intention will always yeah. support the outcome yes so mm -hmm. thank you for listening and of course if you have any questions then please leave a comment uh leave your likes and feel free to ask any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Joe.